The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysing. My partner, Malik Hill. And, man, it just seems like these months are just flying by at this point. Uh, we are into July now and just got over the little holiday weekend. We took a week off because I was gone on vacation and I was supposed to go to New York and flight got canceled. So I ended up not going to New York, but I still took vacation and it was a whole mess. Um, but in that two week time, because our last episode was just before the NBA draft, um, it's become pretty hectic. We had, we have to go over the draft. We have to go over all the off season moves. Um, there's still the Damian Lillard trade that's, you know, supposedly in the works, but they don't have anything set in stone. They don't know exactly where he's going, but he wants out. Um, Malik, how have you liked the uh, the off season so far? It hasn't really been anything crazy, but it has been interesting. Yeah, because there are some bad moves we can talk about. Yeah. Nothing, no, nothing too mind blowing. Yeah, we'll we'll recap it. It's just another one of those seasons where salary cap is supposed to go up, and people are getting weird money. And I don't know how to feel about it right now. It sounds crazy at, at the moment it's basically normal now but it's yeah like you said it still looks crazy yeah and down the road it'll probably be you know fine and these deals will all look look good because it will keep going up um so we wanted to start off with the actual nba draft since that's basically what happened first um i think the draft was kind of boring to me i don't know how you felt i felt i agree with a lot of people a lot of people didn't like the way the coverage went because they kind of had a short analysis, then into the pick, and then they did an interview with the player and the parents, and then it seemed like they were right into the next pick. So it, you didn't get a lot of analysis, and it was just weird, and it felt rushed at times. Um, I don't know. I, did you feel anything about the draft? Or I'm going to be honest. At this point, after a, after a player gets drafted, I start to just like do my own analysis. I don't pay. I don't even pay attention to any player comparisons anymore. Yeah, I might watch a little bit of like the interview with the parents just to see like the like the emotion of it all and mm -hmm. seeing how good it is to see somebody in that situation. But yeah, after, once they get drafted, I start going through my own thoughts. I yeah, the player comparisons barely make sense anymore for a lot of these players. Like every tall point guard that can pass is like Lonzo Ball. Or Jason Kidd, mm -hmm. now Tyrese Halliburton, they're all the same. Yeah, that there aren't any like different comparisons anymore. And if you make a different comparison, you have to like go really hard to try to make it make sense. So yeah, it's a lot of the same now. So yeah, after a player is picked, I just start thinking of whatever I think of the situation. Yeah, um, the draft itself, the actual picks. I don't think there was anything crazy that happened. I don't think anybody took some big crazy risk um, necessarily. I guess like, the weirdest one maybe is uh, Bilal Koulibaly went seventh. He ended up getting traded to the Wizards. Yeah, uh, That was maybe the biggest surprise, but he had already been kind of moving up people's boards just because he played with Victor. He had a growth spurt similar to CJ McCollum. I guess, and I don't know. I, I, to me, this draft was pretty boring. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how you felt about it. Victor went one. It uh, You could have taken Brandon Miller or Scoot Henderson at two. I thought the Charlotte pick for Brandon Miller was the best fit, like we talked about before. Scoot went three to Portland. Amen Thompson went uh, fourth to the Rockets. 
And then we get to the Pistons. They didn't make any trades, which was disappointing. But they took the guy that I was okay with. They took Asar Thompson. People hated it on Twitter. Uh, people... Some people hated it here's, on Twitter. Here's here's my little rant. Really I quick. honestly, I, okay, yeah, I, I saw at least on my Twitter feed and my social media, people were very very upset because for some reason when they saw guard next to a Star Thompson's name, they freaked out. They said, "We have Cade, we have Jaden Ivey. Why do we need another guard? <sighs> we need a stretch. We need a wing. Oh what are we doing?" God. And I told everyone, I, I don't typically comment on Twitter or Facebook or anything. And I kept saying, if you look, typically, maybe, one part over where usually, you know, when you have a a stat line, they show their position, their name, and then their height. And I said, just look to the right of their name. 6'7". In today's NBA, he can play the wing. And and that was it. I, I was just dumbfounded at how upset people were because... We drafted a guard. What? Every small forward in today's game has guard skills. So are they guards? What is Paul George? Yeah. What is KD? Is he a guard? Yeah. What is... Ah, stop it. it. It's just wild to me (laughs) that people are so position obsessed or they get so locked into something uh, that they can't understand where a team is coming from. Now, sure, Asar Thompson is not, to me, it's not super exciting. But nobody was going to be exciting in this draft unless you drafted Victor or probably Scoop. Yeah, there, there were people that were saying they wanted Taylor Hendricks bad. Like, I like Taylor Hendricks, but yeah. that, that wasn't going to have me over the moon. Like, right. There's a lot of, there are a bunch of talented guys that could work for the Pistons in that spot. Yeah. And Asar Thompson was one of them. Mm-hmm. It made sense. He could slide into the three spot. Yeah. Um, let's just talk about the, the, the Pistons first, then we'll get back to the okay. draft since we've already kind of started it. The Pistons went out and got a Sar Thompson at five. Great. Second pick, they ended up trading. I can't remember exactly where they got, they moved up a little bit. Um, and they took Marcus Sasser out of Houston guard. Now you can be upset. But nobody was upset about the Sasser pick. That's the thing that I didn't get. Like, I if you're going to be upset, upset about, about it, at all. I, I'm okay with it. He's a older player, which I kind of like a lot of the times. Um, he's kind of a three and D kind of guy. Apparently, it looks like we're trying to get back to the defensive Detroit mindset. I guess we'll see if that works out. Um, but. It wasn't like a super exciting pick for me, I guess. Um, but if you look at everybody in that area, I wouldn't have been excited about Nick Smith. No, it, even he was the number one player in last year's class. Mm-hmm. He had some injuries. He was he was disappointing for the most part at Arkansas. Yeah, I don't care about how high level of a talent he could be. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I like Marcus Sasser more as a player. Yeah, I do. Like. Yeah, Bryce Sensiball, awesome pick for the Jazz. That would have been another small forward for the Pistons. Yeah, I think that I was... I guess that would have been depth. I think that's like, who I was looking at. I kind of wanted Sensiball there, but I don't know. There's, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a, all kind of... Like, Julian Strother, okay. Yeah, I Cody Brown, okay. Yeah, I kind of would have liked Strother, I think, a little bit as well. But, yeah, I, I'm with you. Like, nothing was blowing me away. I would have been okay with one of those guys. But I don't, I don't hate the Marcus Sasser pick either because we got rid of Corey Joseph eventually, which was great. Um, and that's kind of what I thought when Marcus Sasser got picked. I said, there's no way they're keeping both Killian and Corey Joseph on this roster. Um, so for me, when they drafted him, that just meant that they're turning the page on one of those guys. Which yeah, and Corey Joseph ended up signing about. with the Golden State Warriors. Good for him. Yeah. Um. So the Pistons overall draft. Do you even have like a a grade for it? Because for me, it's like I don't know. I, for for what they had, I don't know what magical trade scenario there could have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you trade back, maybe you get more 
draft like you get extra pick. I don't know. Yeah. Like I I don't know what the perfect situation was for in right here. See, I so I would have loved if they got into the middle of that of the first round. Because I love some of the guys that went there. They got uh you got like Grady Dick going to Toronto. Jordan Hawkins, I thought, is a great pick. He would have been a good fit. He went at 14 to the Pelicans, which I'm excited about. The Pelicans are like, it's wild. Here's my little tangent for the Pelicans. When EJ Liddell got drafted by the Pelicans, we were super excited for it. It's kind of a guy that I wanted. He got hurt, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then this year, I was really high on Jordan Hawkins. I wanted somebody to take a chance on him. And it's my my other team. The Pelicans took Jordan Hawkins. So for some reason, we're just kind of kind of on the way, same wavelength. Um, so that's exciting. But I liked a lot of the guys in in the middle. Even kind of like I, I was kind of interested to see where uh, Hood Shafino went. He unfortunately went to the Lakers, um, but I think he's a good player. Jaime Hawkins, which spoiler alert, he's already tearing up uh, summer league a good a good bit. Great fit for Miami. Yeah. Um, so there's guys in there, but. Again, the Pistons went for kind of a, you know, we'll wait and see approach. I don't know. I'm give. I think I give them a C plus. It's just because there was so much talk, I guess, going into it that the Pistons were going to make a big move or something like that. Troy Weaver was kind of, I don't know if he was just blowing smoke or whatever. Um, but I would say like C plus, B minus. They didn't do bad, but like they didn't do anything either at the same time. I'll I'll give it a B because I I I like the players they picked. I don't really love them. Yeah. But they both have talent. They both can help the team. Mm -hmm. I mean Osar Thompson has a high ceiling. Yeah. It's just that there has to be a lot of work put into him as a player. Yeah. Things have to go right. Um any other draft picks that you want to talk about before we get into like the general off season, and then we'll get back into more Pistons talk. So going forward, I was a really big fan of what Utah did in the jet in this draft. Mm-hmm. They took Taylor Hendricks at nine, Keontae George at sixteen, and Bryce Sensabaugh at twenty eight. Yep. I think all three of those guys are most likely players that play for a long time, mm-hmm. as long as they're healthy. They all have a lot of Bryce Sensabaugh is like. Six eight two forty and is a knockdown shooter. Yeah, Keontae George can play make, but he's a high level scoring guard. Mm-hmm. Got him in the middle of the first, and at nine, Taylor Hendricks, he's almost six eleven with a, a bunch of high level ceiling. He yeah. can shoot the ball. He can defend. He's athletic. He's just got to put it all together. So you got three players that could most likely will all contribute. Yeah, to what the Jazz will become in the future. Mm-hmm. And I I really like what they did. Yeah. I uh, I like what the Magic have done as oh, like they continue to be uh, the NBA version of the University of Michigan for some reason. Um, they took Jet Howard at 11, took Anthony Black at 6. Um, Anthony Black, it's kind of weird because they have, they so, have so many, many point cards. Yeah. Uh, so one of them some, is gone. Yeah, uh, I don't know who. but um, I have no doubt Anthony Black will be a good player. Yeah. I like his yeah his skill and everything. He and has. he's, I mean, he's stinking six seven. Yeah, can kind of play point, can play off guard as well. Um, so I I think that's a good draft. And then I don't know how like some of these teams do this kind of thing. And and this might not even work out. But I just like with with what they had to work with. I think the Warriors did a pretty good job for what they have. They got Brandon Podzem, Podzemski, Podzemski. Podzemski. <laughs> um. Out of Santa Clara. He's just a shooter. He's going to basically replace Dante DiVincenzo. Um, and then they traded back into the second round, the end of the second round, and took Trace Jackson Davis. Who They just signed him to a four-year deal, so they believe yeah. in him. And, I mean, they've done that in the past, you know, even, you know, getting like guys like Jonathan Kuminga and stuff like that, Moses Moody, guys that they've just, they haven't really worked out. They They still might. But I just like the the upside that they take with a lot of guys. So like Trace Jackson Davis, he might not work out in the NBA, but it looks like so far they like his potential. 
And I, I, I think he has some. Upside. I think it's a good chance. Like so, I think this could be like when they drafted Festus Azili, mm. uh, another like veteran big man out of college that not many people figured would be like a quality rotation player, and he was a key piece to them winning their first championship. Until his injuries came, he was a really good piece for them. Yeah. So Trace Jackson Davis could be a guy like that. Mm-hmm. And they find like Kevon Looney and stuff, just guys that will just do whatever they're asked, I guess. Um, anything else out of the draft that you wanted to bring up before we move on to the Pistons off season, the rest of their off season moves? Amani Bates in Cleveland. Yeah. Not too far from home. I don't think it's a bad spot for him, but I just have no idea how it works out. Yeah. I think it'll be nice that, well, I was going to say he's not getting the limelight, but at the same time, Cleveland is still on the, the up and coming. So hopefully he can have enough veteran leadership um, from those guys that will help them out. Uh, but yeah, it, it could be a, it could be a really good fit though to have someone like him come off their bench. Yeah. Could be really good. I also, I love what the Nuggets did. Julian Strother and Jalen Pickett, two guys that could probably help them immediately, mm-hmm. like Christian Brown came in and did. Julian Strother is a six six shooter. Yeah, Jalen Pickett can basically do what Bruce Brown did for them last year. Mm-hmm. He's like a six four do it all guard. So I really like what they did. Yeah. Um. Okay. So the Pistons. After, you know, people talked about, oh, they have cap space. They have cap space. They can maybe go after Cam Johnson. They can do this. They can do that. Well, the Pistons didn't do any of that. Uh, they ended up picking up Alec Burke's uh, contract, so they re-signed him, um, which, honestly, I kind of like. I think he's just a cheap cheap option for the Pistons. He's a good vet. Uh, to keep around. And then... Um, Yeah, he's just another bench piece. Then they made two little trades. Uh, they traded for Joe Harris from the Nets as kind of the Nets needed a salary dump. Uh, and the Pistons got Joe Harris and two second-round picks, basically, for that salary dump, um, which I'm a big fan of Joe Harris. A lot of people think he's washed and that he's he's done and blah, 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 because he, he didn't play very well in the playoffs. Pistons aren't going to make the playoffs, so they don't have to worry about that. Um, and then they also got Monte Morris, um, from the wizards. And that was another like kind of free deal. They, the Pistons gave like a future second round pick. And I I can't remember the year that that one's in, but it's a while. So he's going to kind of take over the Corey Joseph role, I guess. He's one of the better backups in the league. Yeah. So I wonder what Monty Williams is going to do with him and Killian. Yeah, if you want to like improve as a team, we need Monte Morris playing a lot of those minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's it's definitely crowded. Um, like we said with Asar, Marcus Sasser, um, resigning Alec Burks. I mean, he's more of a two guard, but still, Cade Killian, um, Jaden, and then yeah, Monte Morris. So it it'll be it'll be interesting. I personally think Killian should be gone, but a lot of people are still, you know, hoping that something happens, but he's not an 18-year-old kid anymore. He's 21, he's been in the league for 3 years. He's going to be one of those guys that the Pistons trade away and he'll probably do something and then people will be mad, but that's just that's just how it works around here. I think he can he can be a solid backup in this league. For a while. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think he's I don't know. You see I was about to say, I, about to say I don't think he's there. bad, but I kinda think he's bad, so <laughs> I don't I don't know. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's hard when you have no offensive skill. Yeah. It's very hard. Do you like the Joe Harris move? Because a lot of people like I said, a lot of people didn't, even though it's basically a free thing. Because they needed an, another shooter, I I like it, but I'm also on the fence with the fact that he hasn't been that great in the last few years. Yeah. 
and the he has he's had playoff problems and he's had injury problems. Mm-hmm. The thing is, a lot of people were knocking that trade because basically what it did is it, it was a salary dump for the Nets, which basically allowed them to re-sign Cam Johnson, which a lot of people wanted the Pistons to do. Um, but I didn't want to pay Cam Johnson that kind of money. Neither did I. Yeah, I'm fine with losing Cam he Johnson. Got he got 27. Yeah, four years, 102. Yeah, 27 a year, basically. Yeah. That's just way too much for a guy like him. Um, And people were just praising Cam Johnson like he'd become some superstar. I love Cam Johnson. I loved him out of the draft. I think you did. Did you like him too? We both liked him. We were shocked. Chris Chris was the only one that didn't like him. We were shocked where he he went, but we liked him. Yeah, Yeah. because Chris didn't like him because he was old. Stupid. (laughs) Um, Anyway. Um, And he's a good player. He's a solid piece to a championship roster, but he's not going to put you over the top. And I just cannot, in my right mind, spend that kind of money for a guy like him. We get a guy like Joe Harris works out. Cool. If it doesn't work out, no big deal. And the other point that it makes is that we're saving salary cap space for next year. So we'll have even more that we can basically throw a max deal at somebody if they want. Now, that's the tricky part. Will somebody want to come to Detroit? I don't know. And then the other thing that makes people upset is that, oh, we keep kicking the can down the road one more year, one more year. Well, just look at how the draft lottery went. We weren't going to do anything this year. No matter what the outcome of this offseason was, we're not going to win unless we had Victor. If we got that first pick, maybe there's a chance. Outside of that, Cam Johnson is not changing this franchise. Anybody outside of Cam Johnson? Kyle Kuzma wasn't either. Yeah. Ka- even though I would have liked him. Kuzma yeah. would have been a nice pickup. Cam Johnson would have been a nice pickup for the right price. They're not changing this franchise. We're still going to be losers for a year or two more. Even if we get somebody next year, we still may be a year or two away. That's how bad this franchise is down. I don't... I don't think people understand. I want to be hopeful for this team, but it is really hard right now, and we are in the slumps. But we're Listen, turning the corner. That That's what I was about to say. This isn't the sad boy era. No, it's the that, hopeful the, the era. The sad boy era, there was literally no light at the end of the tunnel during that era. Right. There's some light. Yes. There is some. Josh Smith is off the books. Yes. <laughs> you know, we have the space to do something. We're in that next Phase. You have players that you actually believe in. Yes. But I think people are thinking that this could be a 180. You no, know, this is a slow, gradual turn that we're on. Um, and it's it's on its way. Um, but it, it's not going to be an overnight thing. And I, I understand that that's hard for some people to understand, but we have to take baby steps. We need Cade to stay healthy. We need Jaden Ivey to keep improving. We need... Asar Thompson to show some some light, and then Jalen Duran keep keep improving basically, and after that, who knows what could happen? Yeah, like beef stew. I'm already kind of off the beef stew wagon. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of wait and see on that. But like, just looking at some of the guys next year that will be free agents. That I'm looking at. We got guys like Pascal Siakam, DeJounte Murray, Jalen Brown's kind of the big one, but he might get extended. There's been some talks here and there. He also might get traded, to be honest. I don't know. I can never look around at these things. There. I don't. I don't see any major free agent wanting to come to Detroit. Yeah, especially if if Cade is the guy, as we all think he is, and Jaden Ivey is the, is the number two, which he could become. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody wants to come here to be a third wheel, especially yeah. after they just drafted As- Asar Thompson. Mm-hmm. Now they will continue to add like good tough veteran pieces that could get you in the playoffs. Yeah. But I, I don't see a max contract superstar just coming to Detroit. Yeah. 
just because. The only one that I hate to give hope to people of is if this Phoenix Suns thing doesn't work out, Devin Booker would want to come to Detroit. I'm almost positive of it. That would be insane. Yeah. That would be truly insane. And I don't if a player again, like that can just I know. don't want to give people's hopes up. But he's repping Detroit everywhere he goes. Um so that's that's very rumor mill. But like if this experiment doesn't work out with the Suns and they don't win a championship in a year or two, Devin Booker might be a possibility. So that's kind of our our back burner. Overall, how do you feel about the Pistons offseason? To me it was boring. They didn't do yeah, anything. Kind of, kind of underwhelming, but at the same time, yeah, they, they didn't do anything to make me concerned or, like, nervous yeah. with what they did in this offseason. Yeah. It's, it's just another small step. They're keeping – I like that this year is going to be all about the young core. They're not trying to sign a Blake Griffin. They're not trying to sign, you know, some veteran guy just yet. I know that eventually you need veteran leadership. You kind of get that from Bojan and Joe Harris. But I want to see these young guys keep developing, get a lot of playing time. And then once we're ready to like actually start turning the corner fully, then we can go after those veteran guys and uh, go from there. So Pistons, you know, it is what it is. They had a uh, an okay offseason, but nothing, nothing crazy. But I'm okay with that. Like I didn't need them to, to go crazy. Uh, okay. So now we're in the off season. We'll talk about everything else. Tons of stuff happening. I don't know if there's a specific one that you want to talk about. I brought up NBA.com so I can literally go through every single team and we can talk about all their big stuff. But if there's one that you want to talk about and get it out, we can do it. I think we should start with the Rockets. Okay. The Rockets are very interesting. To say the least. Yeah. Rockets fans should be terrified. They should be very afraid yeah. of this weird mix. I, I don't know what, what they're cooking. I don't know what they're cooking, Joey. You remember when the Minnesota Timberwolves drafted Ricky Rubio and Johnny Flynn and missed out on Steph Curry? That's kind of feel how I feel the Rockets <laughs> are doing right now. That is a funny comparison. That's what it kind of feels like in a weird way. Yeah, so for Fred Van Vliet, Three years, 130. He's getting paid more than Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Perennial all-star, borderline superstar player. Mm -hmm. Around 39, 40% from the field the past two seasons. Yeah. Part of that is because he's he's not a very good finisher at the rim. He's not the most athletic guy. He kind of lives off of the mid-range and three-pointers. Yeah. So I, I can't really get that mad, even though you could implement some floaters and get into the Get to the free throw line more. Mm -hmm. So I'm not crazy mad about what he got. It is still strange that he got three years, 130. Like yeah. he's a high level all star. He's like a borderline all star player. They're bringing him in to basically be the leader mm -hmm. and to tie everything together and pl play for a, a quality coach. Yeah. He can have a veteran point guard. So can't get mad at them for that one. Mm hmm. But that second signing, tell me about it. Dylan Brooks, a guy I I I like Dylan Brooks out of college. I was a fan of his at Oregon. First few years in Memphis, I I liked how he played too. Mm -hmm. When they were starting to go to that next level and get to the playoffs, yeah. But last year something changed. He he fully embraced being a villain, yeah. While also claiming that. The fans made him a villain. So you got that going on. And his game is also completely dropping off. He shot under 40% from the field mm -hmm. and took over 950-something shots this year. Yeah. He was by far like one of the worst shooters in the league this year. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Taylor Jenkins and the Memphis coaching staff just let him still have the green light. It didn't help them. Yeah. Not not one bit. Like, I, I don't know what Dylan Brooks did to help Memphis this year outside of being, like, a WWE character. Yeah. Like, leading them out, dancing onto the, like, out of the tunnels before a game. 
Mm-hmm. Like stupid, uh, over aggressive fouls where he would act like he didn't do anything, talking crazy for no reason, mm-hmm. and then shooting terribly from the field. Yeah. I think that's basically what Dylan Brooks was this past year. Yeah. He was a complete negative. But the Houston Rockets said that's worth $20 million a year. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if M.A. Udoka thinks he can like harness – what Dylan Brooks was coming out of college. Yeah. And kind of like his personality that he's right. That he's become and like make of like perfect mesh of it all. But how do you explain this? How, how do you logically explain giving someone that was so bad as a player? I guess he was a solid defender, but that doesn't make up for the terrible offense. And just the unnecessary off-court stuff. Yeah. I don't, what does he add to Houston besides $20 million a year? Right. Um, I, I, I just think, don't, I don't, I don't get it. So I also hate Dylan Brooks. Um, Maybe you don't hate nah, him. I, 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 I said all him. of that. I don't hate him, but I hate what he's turning into. Yeah. So I, I listened to ESPN actually talk about this deal because it boggled my mind too that Dylan Brooks was going to get that kind of money. Um, But again, looking at the landscape of the off season, I don't know if 20 million is actually that bad, but yes, he's kind of supposed to be a three and D player, but he shot terribly. I think the hope is that they signed Fred Van Vliet. They also got Jeff Green, an established veteran. They got Jock Landell too. I, I kind of like that move. But I think, their hope is that getting him out of Memphis, he can reset. Because Memphis was getting a little crazy with, you know, all the jaw stuff, their lack of veteran leadership. Um, it just seemed like Memphis went off the rails last year. Because the year before that, people were like, man, this team could make a push for a championship. They bought into their hype too early. Yeah, and I, I don't think they had anybody to really rein them in. So I'm thinking, you know... The Rockets are like, we've got Ime, we've got veteran guys that we just signed. We can turn Dylan Brooks back into what his trajectory was looking at uh, before this no. past year. He still has talent. Yeah. Like, the talent isn't gone. Mm-hmm. He, I, 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 I blame the coaches for a lot of what happened. Because why do you just allow him to shoot like that? Yeah. I will never understand it. Mm-hmm. Like, they would let him take, like, eight, nine threes a game in the playoffs. It hit like three, maybe on a good night. Yeah, like it. It just didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it agree. Did. And uh, they do. They did get uh, Patty Mills as well from a trade. Now there was a little veteran leadership. I thought he went to OKC. I don't believe. Well, maybe because a lot of these websites are really confusing when I'm trying to look at how the moves were made. Let me double check. Oklahoma City receiving five total second round picks for taking on Patty Mills and Victor Oladipo's expiring contracts. Okay, so he's a part of that one? Yeah. So I don't know if OKC's. Okay. Oh, Rockets announced the trade with Nets for Patty Mills. So I guess it happened today. Okay. That's why I was maybe confused because it did just happen. I bought a deal through Houston. It's kind of confusing. Yeah. But- as a four-team Dylan Brooks yeah. sign and trade, was where he went to the uh, to the Thunder, and then the Nets end up getting him, and then yeah, okay. So it's just one of those big mess trades. That's all. Um, so he's with the Rockets, but he's not gonna really play a whole lot. But he should. So I don't think they. Who else do they have? As shooters, I don't know if they really have any. My problem starts to become. They've got to figure out this roster because they're getting into the position where the Magic are at the moment with guards. They got Fred Van Vliet now. He's your starting point. They drafted yeah. Eamon Thompson. Again, he could also play the wing. Yeah. But they signed Dylan Brooks, who could play the wing or the two. But then you have Jalen Green. Jalen Green is the two. Right. Oh, so, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Then that pushes Dylan Brooks to the wing and then you have Eamon Thompson, who you drafted at four, is going to come off the bench uh, as yeah. a team that's in the dumps? That's a weird one. 
bringing Dylan Brooks off the bench would be the best thing. Kevin Bush Porter Jr. has million. still been rumored to maybe get traded or something at some point. Uh, they did let go of Josh Tr- Christopher. They did trade Kenyon Martin Jr. too, He's right? with the Clippers. Yes. Um, also got rid of Ty Ty Washington. They're just... W- I don't know. The Rockets confuse the heck out of me. Because Honestly, they just drafted Ty Ty Washington. I think they're keeping a lot of the young guys. They... Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, Shingun, Amin Thompson. Yeah. Those are your key young guys. Kevin Porter Jr., who knows what they'll do with him. He'd be a nice sixth man, but they might trade him. Mm-hmm. But those four young guys I just listed, those are the keepers. Yeah. But they also drafted Cam Whitmore, too. True. So so I guess Cam Whitmore is a part of the list also. Tari Eason, my guy? I forgot about Tari Eason, man. Yes. Yeah. Tari Eason. So they're like this weird mix I, I just don't understand their direction but here they are oh they also signed Aaron Holiday today how does that make any sense that's another guard yeah. I agree with you the Jock Landell if you bring in Aaron Holiday you, yeah you got to get rid of Kevin Porter Jr. because that means you want veteran presence and yeah yeah it, it's it's weird all right we got 25 minutes so we got to pick and choose where we go from here. I want to just briefly mention the Warriors. They did re-sign Draymond Green. He's back for four years. 100 mil? Yeah. And they also got Chris Paul, who was just sitting on the Wizards. But um, that was from... Did we talk about the Bradley Beal trade? We I, had to have, right? I can't even remember. to be. We might have. We had to have. Yeah, we did. Okay. okay. I was like, whew, I'm getting all confused now. So Chris yeah. Paul was on the Wizards because of the Bradley Beal trade. He's now on the Warriors, which I think is great for them. Gives them. You might be one of the few people I've heard that said that. You might be the only I, person I've heard that said that. I so I want, I want you to go on on this one. People think this is terrible for the be- most part. Because Steph plays point guard? Is that why they're they're mad? They don't understand how him and Draymond could be the exact kind kind of like same player on the court at the same time if you guys okay so i've really gotten into listening to draymond green and paul george they did draymond green was on paul George. i watched a few of the clips yeah those two guys talking back and forth just makes me feel smart because what they say and how they're describing daily things in the nba is just wild to me and it's for a person like me that loves the deep analysis of moves and things like that fantastic highly recommend um but draymond was saying he's had to do so much of the heavy lifting in the backup role like the backup lineup so your secondary unit he was leading a lot of that in the playoffs so his minutes with steph curry were way down from previous years so he was saying chris paul joining the team he can kind of become the leader of that second unit Yes, he'll probably play at the first unit at times, but he doesn't have to, and he can just bring up a lot of those young guys. He's been – Draymond Green credits Chris Paul for making DeAndre Ayton work uh, in the NBA. And so he can possibly get to those young guys. Draymond Green thinks Chris Paul is going to unlock Jonathan Kuminga. Chris Paul is just the ultimate veteran at this point, and he can still sauce people up for 20 points in a game if he wanted to. Every once in a while. Not every night, but he has like one of the cleanest mid ranges still in the game, I think. Um, so I don't know how people don't say that this helps. I don't know. To me, it's just it's weird. I think Chris Paul is a great fit. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to bring up the Warriors. Um, is there any other oh, let's talk about the Lakers. Because we both hate the Lakers. People are saying the Lakers are winning the off season. Agree or disagree? I think they did a really good job okay. because it seemed like they didn't have a lot of money to make many moves. Mm-hmm. It seemed like Austin Reeves was going to want like kind of what Dylan Brooks wanted or maybe more. Yeah. And they ended up settling on four years, 54, which is really great. Yeah. And kind of what Dylan Brooks should be doing. Austin Reeves did more in the playoffs than Dylan Brooks. 
Uh, getting Gabe Vincent on three years, 33 is great. Uh, who else did they sign? So they got they re- got Rui Hachimura back. Yeah, they got Rui back. Was that four years, 51? Uh, I don't I think. Have... It was three years, 51. Three years, 51. Yeah. Um, and then, gosh dang it, my phone just keeps closing out. So um, they got Jackson Hayes, which is disappointing for me for a Pel- as a Pelicans I honest, fan. I honestly don't even – I don't see him doing he, much. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's not – Turned out to be much. It's just a shot in the dark, kind of. Uh, Torian Prince. That's a really nice move. It was a one-year, like, $4 million deal or something. I think I, Torian Prince will do better with the Lakers than Malik Monk. I mean, not Malik Monk. Uh, Malik Beasley did. Okay. Uh, Torian Prince has shown he can come in and hit, like, four threes. And I that's didn't huge think, for a player making one year four. I million. thought Torian Prince's career was over. He kind of revitalized it last Admitted, year. Yeah, Minnesota led. He had some games in Minnesota last um, year. I still don't like him so much. I know that Chris is also a fan of Torian Prince, um, but to me, it's a meh. I agree. I think Austin Reeves was the big, the big one, especially for the money. Like he could have gotten the bag somewhere. Yeah, I'm very surprised by that. Um, they got Camp Reddish. I like him, but Listen. it. it Accor- He's already been moved twice According already. According to Cam Reddish fans, all it takes is that one spot. Yeah. And he hasn't even – Bull Bull fans and Cam Reddish fans come together to say their players don't get the, the shot they deserve. Yeah. If Cam Reddish couldn't find a spot on the Knicks, I don't think he's finding a spot on the Lakers. This is, it's all the coach's fault. Yeah. It's all their fault. They got D'Angelo Russell back. Okay. It, he's all right. He's he's still a good player. He just ha- he He fell off hard in those playoffs. Yeah. And then Gabe Vincent, like you said. I don't know. I, like to me, I like it. Those names like don't. I think I think it gives them like a definitive eight man, like a confident eight man rotation yeah. that you can trust in the regular season and going into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Like Gabe Vincent played better than a lot of guards. Yeah. In the playoffs, I just can't wait to see Lakers fans win. LeBron leaves and then ensuing uh, Anthony Davis leaves because LeBron leaves. It's going to be in shambles. Listen, but, but by the like second month or third month of the season, they will start complaining that Torian's print, Torian Prince isn't hitting threes. Yeah. And Gabe Vincent is only averaging like 13 a game. They're going to complain because it's what they do. I mean, it won't be to the level of Kobe Bryant playing with Jeremy Lin and Robert Sacra and all those guys. Now, this is going to be a playoff team. But – when LeBron if leaves, healthy. when LeBron leaves, oh, it's gonna be rough. I can't wait I because can't. they are in a bad spot. Um, okay, uh, another team. I'm trying to just look. Oh, I kind of want to talk about the Pacers. Okay, I have I have a team after we okay. talk about the Pacers. Okay, so we'll just keep bouncing around. That's that's fun. So the Pacers signed Bruce Brown to a two year. Forty-five million dollar deal, good for Bruce Brown. Uh, pff, that's wild to yeah. me that somebody would pay Bruce Brown that much money. Um, but apparently, the Pacers wanted to. That's their money. Maybe they think they can make the jump. I think their team is close. I, I do think they have a chance. Yeah. Get, getting a guy that was a integral piece to a championship team. I can understand why he got two years, forty-five. It still seems like a lot. Yeah, but. And they need, they time. need a guy that just will go do whatever they need. Yeah. So he I can, get it. He can score when you need. He plays defense. He, he does it all. Yeah. Then they signed Tyrese Halliburton to the max extension. So he's getting his five-year, yeah. $260 million. Him and LaMelo got the super. And Anthony Edwards as well. So a lot of those guys uh, from that draft class getting paid. Um, but not Killian Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Obi Toppin. Uh, was traded from the Knicks. Is that trade to the official? Yeah, I swear I never saw us. I, I saw it was going to be official in a day or two. Yeah, but I never saw it was official. And the Knicks are just getting two second round picks back for Obi Toppin. I think it's a it's a solid upside play for the Pacers. Um, I think the Pacers are trying to say that they're going for playoffs, but it's hard to say if it's going to work out. Is Bruce Brown going to be that? last piece that they need Bruce Brown and Obi Toppin I don't think so they can challenge for the play in yeah Bruce Brown will help them challenge for the play in yeah I agree I think I think their roster is close enough um 
but it's weird that they're still holding on to Miles Turner, even though they've talked about trading him forever. So that's kind of the confusing part. Go ahead. What's your team? So the Atlanta Hawks. Mm -hmm. Finally finding a suitor for John Collins. For two, almost three years, ever since that Eastern Conference Finals run, Mm -hmm. there has been talks about John Collins moving. Yeah. A year went by, nothing. Mm -hmm. Another year went by, nothing. Then all of a sudden, John Collins is traded for like a bag of Lay's, Mm -hmm. (laughs) a pack of Capri Suns, Mm -hmm. and some like I I don't know, like what 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 was what was that trade? What what are the what did the Hawks get? (laughs) What value did the Hawks get back? Rudy Gay. I can't believe Rudy (laughs) Gay still has value in the league. Shouts out to Rudy, man, that he's still getting paid. But are, are we are we serious? And then in the draft, listen. As a Michigan guy, <laughs> I like Kobe Bufkin. But uh, it, is he really? About, are you trying to make the playoffs? If you're trying to still yeah. be a playoff team, I don't see how Kobe Bufkin is going to like. You could have kept Cam Reddish last year. Yeah. Like he was he was giving you some games where he scored twenty plus mm-hmm. and looked like he had some talent. You give him away. Now you draft a somewhat undersized two guard. He's like six four. Yeah. Kind of skinny. He had a great second half of the season. Pretty average first half. Mm-hmm. And now you're just banking on him with a fourteenth pick. He's not gonna start. Second round you took Seth Lundy. I don't know if he's ever gonna play. So I have no idea what the Hawks want to do. Yeah. I don't know if they want to win. Like they they got two all-star level guards. Cool. Mm-hmm. Clint Capella is a high level defensive center. I like him more than Rudy Gobert if we're being honest. I, I Rudy Gobert is overrated. Clint Capella is just as good. But I I don't know what else. I just don't see it. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, they got Quinn Snyder. But I I don't see how this roster comes together and, like, makes sense for any type of real run. Like, is Trey Young is going to average 30? DeJounte Murray is going to average, like, 26? How many games are they, they going to win? Like, 44? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't – I just don't understand what Atlanta's doing. Mm-hmm. And I would be very confused if I was a Hawks fan. Yep. You waited two years to trade John Collins. And this is a great segue because the team that I wanted to talk about next has so many ties to the Hawks. We're talking about the Dallas Mavericks. Traded Luka on draft night. I really like what they did in the draft. But I like what they did in the draft too. They got Derek Lively Jr., which we kind of projected the whole time. Yeah, Um, He's like a young Tyson Chandler type. Yeah, so he's kind of a defensive anchor for them. They needed a big guy. Um Maxon's Maxon's prosper. They got him too. Oh, right. He has a lot of talent. Yeah. Um, but they're in the same boat. Atlanta, if they don't figure something out, Trey Young's probably gone. If the Mavericks don't try to figure something out, Luca could get out of there at some point. And their offseason was so weird to me. Uh, I thought they were going to be another team that was going to be big on, you know, making big moves or something like that. I don't remember their free agency move outside of re-signing Kyrie. Did they make another one? Well, let me let me tell you about it. They got Kyrie back on a three-year deal. Yeah. Okay. They kind of needed to because if they didn't, then Luka might have been walked out then. Yeah. Uh, they, got, they brought Dwight Powell back. Okay. Hooray. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got Seth Curry again. I like that move. I uh, like it. They needed they needed another shooter again. Dante Exum has been resurrected. He's back to the Dallas Mavericks because the Australian legend, uh, whoever it was that was on the Jazz that drafted him, is now a part of the Mavericks organization. I already forgot who that is. Um, and then was it yesterday or today? It was yesterday. Was it today? The Mavericks got Grant Williams. Yeah. And then they extended And a side and trade. Was it, it was like three years, like $50 million, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Where is 
four year fifty four. Okay. The Luke. Mavericks got Grant Williams in two future round two future second rounds. The Celtics got a multitude of picks, second round picks. And then the Spurs got Reggie Bullock in an unprotected 2030 first round pick. There we go. 2030. Our first Listen, if if you're getting the good version of Grant Williams, I think you're pretty much getting what Dor- Dorian Finney Smith gave them. And he was a key piece to how good they were as a team. Mm-hmm. So Grant Williams could be a good piece. I don't know if he'll be as good of a fit as Dorian Finney Smith was. To me, I think the Mavericks are desperate. Okay. <laughs> I just think this team, like, Grant Williams doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, the four four year fifty four is what Austin Reeves got. I think he's a better player than Grant Williams. I know Grant Williams had a lot of promise coming out of college, but two playoffs just, ago, Grant Williams played really well in the playoffs. Yeah. Maybe if he gets more time. But I don't like they re signed Dwight Powell, so like they're kind of the same guy. Well Grant Williams shoots. A little. Dwight Powell, well, yeah. <laughs> when, when Grant Williams is on, he's on. When he's not, ugh. <laughs> exactly. But, but at least he has moments of being on. Dwight Powell doesn't shoot jumpers. Yeah. Like, he's a 6'7 big that catches lobs. Mm-hmm. And now you got Derek Lively, so Derek Lively might be, it's probably a better version of Dwight Powell. Yeah. All right. Now, we only have a couple minutes left, so I want to talk about kind of the big news because we didn't actually yeah, talk about we've it. We've got to talk about. That guy that demanded a trade. Well, we actually Finally. To, we actually have to talk about something else. Oh, okay. <laughs> we didn't so talk about. Bigger? Yeah, we'll we'll try to go through all of it really okay. quickly to hit the the biggest moves. The Celtics got Kristaps Porzingis, and we didn't yes. talk about that. Uh, so the Celtics landed Kristaps Porzingis. Let me pull up the details. And that was a three team trade, so that gets three of these teams. Knocked out of the way. Yeah. The Celtics got Kristaps Porzingis from the Wizards. They got the number 25 pick that ended up getting traded to the Pistons that turned into Marcus Sasser. They also got a 2024 first round pick that's top four protected from the Warriors or originally with the Warriors. The Grizzlies got Marcus Smart. And then the Wizards got Tyus Jones, Danilo Gallinari, Mike Muscala, and the number 35 pick, which I don't remember what that turned into. The Wizards also got Jordan Poole. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was another one we didn't talk about. So the Wizards so yeah, got Jordan, Jordan Poole. Might average that was part of the almost thirty. Yeah, that was part of the Chris Paul trade. Yeah. Um. So the Wizards are in. Real, finally, finally rebuild. Yeah. No middling anymore. Yeah. But in a weird middling spot. Yeah. Um. What do you think this does for the Celtics? I think it, a lot of people think it makes them into contenders. I think it definitely, well, they're already contenders. Right. I think it definitely, like, it could get them back to the finals because bringing Al Horford off the bench with the second unit will probably make things so much easier. Now that you have Chris Dallas Porzingis, a seven foot three, four man who can stretch out and hit the threes at a high level. He had his most, he- most healthy and best NBA season overall last year. Mm-hmm. And people don't know because it was in Washington. Yeah. Nobody cares. So if he can replicate most of what he did last year, playing 60-something games, shooting at a high clip, playing good offensively, being a good rim protector, you got him and Robert Williams at the four and five, that's a real threat. Mm -hmm. Because Chris Tapps doesn't have to hang around in the paint. He can step out and shoot. Right. And Robert Williams can continue to do what he does and get even better, be an elite defender and rebounder and and rim runner. Mm -hmm. And Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have showed they – they have moments where they can go cold yeah. and lose confidence. Chris Haps Porzingis can give you 20. Mm-hmm. There's there's no, like, problem with, like, you know Al Horford could maybe give you, like, 15 on a really good playoff game. Yeah. Chris Haps could give you almost 30 mm-hmm. if guys get cold. Yeah. So, it's a, yeah. And I know that Al Horford stretches the floor, but Chris Haps just stretches it even more. Yeah. Clears the space for Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Uh, so, I love it. I don't love it that he's in Boston, but I've always been a Chris Tops fan. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. How do you feel about Marcus Smart going to the Grizzlies? I think it might go as well as when Tony Allen went to Memphis. Hmm. And it's almost written in the stars because they both went to Oklahoma State. Yep, that was They funny. both were Celtics, and they both became Memphis Grizzlies at the age of 29. Mm-hmm. Like the, the odds of this going wrong, like he he might be the voice, the face, the person 
on the court and off the court that will pull Ja to the side and say, calm down. Mm -hmm. You are one of the best young stars in the league. You are close to being one of the top faces of the league. You can get that back. Yeah. Just be just be John ja Morant. Right. Just be John ja Morant and follow my lead as a leader. Yeah. He's bringing the he's bringing the toughness, everything that Tony Allen brought. Marcus Smart has a jumper along mm -hmm. with it. Like he has the defense, he has the intensity, he has the leadership, and he can shoot. Yeah. He'll probably be what Memphis wanted Dylan Brooks to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I have a lot of stock in that move. And the experience. One more thing before we finish up with the big news. Um, I wanted to mention the Cleveland Cavaliers. We mentioned they drafted Imani Bates. They got Karis Levert, Levert back. They also signed uh, George's Niang to a three-year deal, which is a solid move. And they got Max Struess on a sign-in trade. Yeah. How do you think their offseason was? I think it was decent. Getting Karis back is good. Getting Max Struess... Four four years, sixty three million dollars. Yeah, is wild. It's not four years eighty, so it's not anything crazy. Yeah, but even though he he fell off in the finals, he had a great like first three round run in the playoffs, and showed he can hit shots and play tough. Yeah, Cleveland can add another player like that. Losing Jetty Osman to San Antonio, Max Struess has more talent. Overall, so I think he can give you more than Jetty Osman. Yeah. So it's solid. All right. And the big news that we're waiting on, and we probably will be a couple weeks, honestly. Yeah. Damian Lillard. Finally. Finally wants out of Portland. Finally. It took you long enough. And nobody knows where he's going to go. He wants to be a Miami Heat. I think he said Miami and Brooklyn would be his, like, one and two preferred spots. Hmm. And I guarantee Portland is going to play hardball. So far, they and, kind of are. Yeah, they're they're looking at other places. Yeah. They're not just gonna give him away because not every team is as dumb as the Wizards to give someone a no trade clause. Yeah. So Portland technically, you know, has somewhat control, but I believe it was today as well. Damian Lillard's agent has been calling around to the teams that are asking about Portland. That. If they trade for Damian Lillard, they will get an unhappy player. So that's kind of his, their, their his agent is sending that to teams he doesn't yeah, want to go to. Basically. Okay. So that's just the game. It could be interesting. <laughs> that's just a part of the game. Um I've heard teams like my obviously Miami. I've heard the Clippers at one point. I've heard San Antonio as rumors. They're everywhere. Um I'd really like seeing him in Brooklyn would be exciting to me. You think so? Him with with that like that new fresh up and coming Nets team throwing in Dame. Mm -hmm. Like they, they have they have quality pieces. If I still had hope for Ben Simmons, I think that would be a fun trade. <laughs> We're not even gonna talk about him. Because again, we always have to talk about potential, but like if Ben Simmons ever figured it out and he was paired with Scoot Henderson, that'd be cool. Listen. Ben Simmons is putting in that work in the summer again. You just got to believe. Yeah. You just got to believe. Yeah. Another summer. Um, Where do you want to see Damian Lillard? I want to see him in Miami. You do? I want to see him and Jimmy. I wonder where Tyler Hero fits. Do they just do they just ship him? Yeah. Is he one of the main pieces they, they ship? They, they said that Tyler Hero would be the backbone of the trade. Okay, so yeah. the projected one was, I believe, three first-round picks, Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. I believe that was yeah. kind of the backbone. I, I really hope they wouldn't move Jaime Hawkins because I I think he's almost Jimmy Butler Jr. <laughs> so I need Jaime to stay and come off that bench. I mean, in Miami. he's he's completely but, Miami. He's already bought into the culture. Yeah. I mean, his name is Jaime. Like it just works with Miami. So I don't know. Y yeah, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, Tyler Hero and Duncan plus picks to Portland. I would really like that move. Yeah. Now to me, I get it doesn't fit with what he wants. But I kind of want him to be a spur. <laughs> that that would be another process. To pair him with Victor would be kind of like, cool. The Spurs aren't winning right now. No. I don't care how much people try to hype this up. Victor yeah. isn't going to be an all-star year one, and the Spurs aren't winning a lot in year one. 
Yeah. They're going to be on TNT, TNT a lot. Mm-hmm. They're going to be on ESPN a lot. Yeah, you'll see National League covered yeah. games. Listen, y'all get to watch Kelton Johnson. Enjoy it. You yeah. get to watch my guy and Devin Vassell. Yeah, Devin Vassell. But the Spurs aren't winning much. Yeah. Um. By next week, do you think Damian Lillard's traded? No. Okay, I agree with that. I think it's going to take I a while. I would love it. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. it give us something to talk about. I, th- I honestly think it might almost go into like the last week of just like July going into August. Yeah. It's going to go for a few weeks. Yep. It's going to be a lot of back and forth. It'll be exciting. Um, I'm interested yeah. to see. Um, next week, we'll talk about – talk about – we'll mention Summer League. We will mention it. Joey's We're not going to talk about it. time of the year. Um, but we do have to talk about, yeah. you know, a lot of big names. Victor is going to play tomorrow. Um, and yeah. then – Asar is playing. Will, yeah, the Pistons will have their first game on Saturday. And then – We'll just talk about some of the main guys, and then we'll we'll move on. We'll talk about Damian Lillard if he's traded or if there's any updated news. Maybe we'll do a list. We still have to talk about college football schedule. We're just so backed yeah, we up. Might, we might get to it. Uh, yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll I have see. to remember my list idea, too. I, I remember it. Okay. I'll save it. Cool. Yeah. All right. This has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time. Damian Lillard to the Pistons. Okay, cutting it up. Let's go.